Just because you have a wood shop does not mean that you're gonna be using the same tools as everybody else. So over the last few years, I've been able to condense down the tools that I actually use on a daily basis, and they're really not that special. It's just kind of normal wear and tear tools, and I've decided to throw them all in this toolbox. Obviously, it's going to change and adapt as I'm working on different projects, but this toolbox is designed so it can follow me around the shop as I'm doing work and provide to me my most used tools. One of these drawers is completely empty, and I'll be talking about that later on in this video about why and what we're gonna be doing about it. First and foremost, this is a US general toolbox. It's made by Harbor Freight. I don't make any money if you end up getting something like this, but the reason that I did is because it's really not that bad of quality for $250. It is certainly a lot better than the Cobalt and Husky options out there for this price point, and if you're looking for something small like this that can roll around the shop, I highly recommend it. But I've got a really big gripe about it as well. Right now when the top's open, you can easily open up these drawers with the little tabs that you have to push in and then pull, which is a little bit of annoyance, but even more so is when the top is closed and you're using Using it to hold stuff up here, you can't get in here. First, let's start off with the side of the toolbox. I don't know why the camera's up that high. All right, that's kind of better. Okay, so this is for my drills, for power stuff, as well as my quickly used spray paint. I chose Dewalt a very long time ago, which as many of you know, once you kind of choose a brand, you kind of stick with that because of the batteries. But I've got my battery charging station, which runs behind this piece of wood and then plugs right into here. And then this I also got from Harbor Freight, it's just a magnetic strip that I can plug into an extension cord so this thing can wheel around the shop. And then obviously when I'm not using it to charge or power anything, it just kind of, hangs out right there. These drill holders are not the best thing in the world. If you do end up buying this toolbox, you're gonna have to probably do a little bit of uh, finagling like I did. I mounted this piece of wood right here so that I could mount all of this charging stuff to it, as well as mounted a piece of metal running from right here to the other side so that this could just kind of like loop on and hang out. Uh, otherwise, this will not hook up to the very top lip the way that it's supposed to on the bigger type of toolboxes because this lid, it closes and it's not not going to accept that. So if you do get this drill station and hope to implement this, know that you're going to have to do a little bit of custom work to make sure that it actually fits. But for the most part, this is my three main used drills. I've got two more drills in here for things like epoxy and more dirty type of work, but these are kind of my daily drivers and I use them a lot. The reason that I'm a big proponent of having a ton of drills is because I normally just use a few different types of bits and it's really nice just to grab that drill with that bit without having to switch things over a whole lot. It certainly is a luxury, but one that's very easy to achieve over a few years when using a shop and buying just the bare tools whenever they're on sale for the holidays, that kind of stuff. And like I said below here, I've got two spots for spray paint, which normally is going to be like a spray varnish for myself. And I hold a few other cans of spray paint and just random little paints around here uh, down at the bottom that are completely out of the way. All right, so while we're here, let's go ahead and go to the other side. One of the things that I do like is that it is maneuverable where it has casters right here that are fully articulating and then fixed ones on the other side. Uh, it makes it pretty easy to move around the shop, uh, but at the same time, I wish that there was a locking feature that was a lot easier to go ahead and just like press one thing to lock all the wheels. There's three different settings on these wheels and I found myself like fiddling with them too much and sometimes it's a little bit annoying, so there's that. On this side, I have a little bit of my PPE, so I've got my mask. It's really nice just to be able to hang it one place and know that it's just with the cart at all times. I have my dust collector remote. That's super nice to have that as well. And then a glove box holder so that I can just have disposable gloves and always have them with me. I use those probably a lot more than you might think, especially when I'm handling woods that I don't wanna get like any type of sweat on, random things like that. Uh, gloves, very useful, use them all the time. And then down here I have my Posca paint pens. These things are great too. I use them in a lot of different things. I know that most people are probably aren't gonna have like paint markers uh, in their shop, but I use them quite often. Uh, so that's where they hang out. And then up here, I've got my ear protection as well. If you do wanna see the back, this is what it looks like. Um, setting this card up is a little bit difficult, I've gotta say. Uh, it took a little bit of time and it is not perfect by any means. Uh, you can see right here, like I've got these in, but not those, and that's just because I couldn't get it to fit. Um, I don't think that I'm not capable of doing it, but sheesh, uh, it took a little bit. And you can see right here, it is the 30 inch five drawer mechanics cart. So if anybody is directly interested in what it actually is, uh, there it is. This is the gray color that I think just came out in 2023. Um, I think it looked better than the other colors and it was on sale, so. 
there's that. And I guess lastly, down here, I have all these ammo boxes and these just hold bulk screws. I use a few different length of screws in the shop and it's just kind of what I've ended up sticking with over the years. And these holds these bulk screws so that I can take that out, take them to the project. And there is a little bit of room behind here as well where I can put in extension cords. All right, so onto the top for my most used items. I've got all the setup so that it is quick and easy to grab. So let's start over here and move this way. I primarily focus on CNC woodworking in my wood shop. So that's kind of what all this is for is the main measuring and then tool changes for the CNC. I can pull this right up to whatever CNC machine I'm working with and know that I've got my main stuff right here. These wrenches are to change out the bits for the collets, both for my spindle and then my Makita router. And then I normally have a few USBs laying around here as well because I make my files in my house and bring them out here because I don't have Wi-Fi in my shop. Right here that you can see this is my mainly used bits. And then I have a set of digital calipers. These by far are not the nicest thing in the world, but they are a step up from the normal like $10 ones. I have run through like four pair of those other ones and these are working out pretty well. Uh, they are pretty heavy, but for the most part, I have gotten pretty good use out of them, like dependable results. If you're interested in any of the tools I'm talking about, I have them linked down in the description below. And then I also have this, just a brush to be able to brush off the bench, especially when I'm not wanting to use compressed air to blow things off. Uh, this is really useful and I use it a ton. It just kind of like goes off into the side. This right here is meant to hold like screwdrivers and drop down long tools into it. But the way that I have things set up, especially with the wood that I have all this charging stuff mounted to, it kind of gets in the way and I really didn't want to use it that way. So I found out that this brush just kind of magically fits really nicely in there. The majority of the CNC bits that I use are from Cadence Manufacturing. They are the Jenny bits. So I've got the Groovy Jenny for the 60 degree and 90 degree. I use this white side bowl bit a good amount. So hopefully Cadence Manufacturing comes out with some type of a bowl bit in the future so that I can just only have that in here. And then I use the downtown Jenny for the majority of what I do, which is mainly hardwood type projects. So in here, I've been trying to work at getting a good system where things are just kind of together. I know that normally people put their CNC bits uh, in little sleeves, and I think that's great for people who are much more organized than me. But for me, I just kind of have mine out and loose. And I found that these topographical trays that I make to sell, um, I've got a few of them laying around here and I use them just to kind of throw my bits in. So not only measuring for projects, but also measuring for much bigger things. This is where I try and keep my tape measures. If I were to just put one type of tape measure in my shop, it would be these. They are fantastic. They're super cheap. They've lasted me a very long time and they're really easy to read. So if you're somebody who's brand new to woodworking and you don't know how to read a tape measure, a lot of these just have it written on it. So it makes the process a lot easier, especially when you're looking to measure things as precisely as possible for CNC type work. Um, these things are great. Now onto this, this is a first aid kit by my medic. So funny story for when I used to work at a inpatient rehabilitation center, we would put in first aid kits into the wood shop and we would have to go through and take out like half of the things in there. So any type of aspirin, any type of like alcohol swabs or anything like that, we would have to take out of the entire medical kit, which means that we were just left with a few fairly useless things. The really nice part about my medic is they make very targeted medical kits. So this is their TFAC, it is meant for trauma. If I get hurt enough in the shop where I'm looking for some type of medical kit, this is what I want around. This is gonna be for trauma, it's gonna be for stopping bleeding quickly. The really great thing about this is it just kinda hangs out in this little pouch, but I can also throw this in the truck for when I go hunting or fishing and know that I have the exact stuff that I need with me in a very small form factor. So if you're out there and you're looking for some type of a first aid kit that not only hangs out in your shop, but you can also throw into your truck, this is the best solution out there. I find myself gravitating towards these hex keys that are in this little bicycle kit way more than anything else. Certainly it doesn't fit every situation, but it does fit for most of them. So I keep this up here in this top drawer because it is really easy to grab for those very small situations that I do need hex keys. Also a pair of scissors, it's hard to beat that. And then I've got my pins as well as my tape. If you're not using blue tape, um, I highly suggest you get some, obviously for masking things off but also for lining things up for making things stick to each other that isn't permanent there's just tons of uses for it and I also have my double-sided tape which is what I use for a lot of the holding purposes on my CNC machine this stuff is great I've used a bunch of double-sided tape and this is by far what I like the best so that's what I use and then over here I've got these two brushes this is just to brush off areas that I have freshly cut on the CNC machine for any type of fuzzies or whatever left over in the project it's really easy just to grab these use them and then throw it back into the box so and then next to the pen I have just a random notebook and then a headlamp, which is pretty useful when kind of digging around in tools trying to fix problems that don't have a lot of light. 
headlamp's nice. And then over here, I've just got a bottle opener. Uh, this is one of the first ones that I ever made. It is definitely not perfect, but I think that's kind of why I keep it around because it is the first one that I made. So if I ever need a bottle opener, it's right there. Let's check in with some drawers. So first drawer up is going to be pliers and then chisels. I do use these chisels to kind of clean things up, but most of them are beater chisels. And then I always make sure that I have a very, very small one around. Just for fine cleanup work, it is very helpful to have around. And then also, you know, just the normal pliers. But I also have some router bits over here for use on templates. And I just kind of keep those there by themselves. Uh, and then some long reach CNC bits that I very, very rarely use, but I want to make sure is in the cart, but just kind of out of the way. All right, so next up is a pretty weird drawer. It is kind of the fire drawer. So I've got my gloves in here. Uh, but I also just have a ton of different ways that I have fire. So the normal propane tank that you're used to seeing like a Home Depot or a Lowe's, but also just a candlestick lighter. And then out of the three, I think I use this the most. When I first got into woodworking, I didn't realize how much I was gonna be using fire for things. And I use fire all the time. So I've got some butane refuel and then all those three different fire options and then extra bits of my tape. I also have my punches right here. So whenever I do any type of custom work with metal that need punching, boom, right there, I've got the entire alphabet. And then also back here, I've got a little pigment for epoxy and I keep that here because I use these torches a lot for epoxy. Next up is the old empty drawer and I've got a lot of hopes for this drawer. And the reason that it is empty is because this is gonna be filled completely with bits. Not only drill bits, but driver bits and pre-drill bits, everything bit related is gonna be in this drawer. And the reason that I haven't filled this up yet is because I am waiting on a Kickstarter order. Shaper Trace uh, has recently done their Kickstarter and they've finished up, so it should be showing up any day now. But I'll be able to draw very specific pockets to be able to fit all the different bits that I have that are gonna be fitting in here. I have like four different shops worth of random bits all in the same place and uh, really excited about organizing all those. So that's what's going in here and that is why it is empty right now. Before we go back up to the top, we'll go ahead and hit this drawer. And this is something that I use pretty regularly. I definitely use my 18 gauge nailer a lot. That's from Harbor Freight. It's been fine. It's cheaper than everything else that I've been able to find. And it's great. Just make sure that you keep it oiled, which for some reason I don't have in this drawer. But also I use this trim router a ton. If I were to just to have like a top 10 list of tools in the shop, a trim router is definitely one. I got that one for like 10 bucks at a pawn shop. But whenever one day that does hit the dust, I probably will end up getting a battery powered DeWalt one, uh, just because it goes with all of my other DeWalt tools. Uh, because whenever I do use it, it's really nice when the cord is not in the way. But for right now, it works, why replace it? And then I've got this rivet gun, which strangely enough, I use a good amount. And then I've got these two drills. These are definitely my beater drills. So they're used for epoxy, random dirty projects and stuff like that. Um, so I've got my main ones that I use on a daily basis on the side. And then these are just kind of the beater ones that I keep down here. And then once again, going back up top, we're gonna look at the hammer drawer. These are the main hammers that I use. I use this the most out of anything else. And that is just a really cheap mallet. Pretty sure it's made by Estwing. Yep, there you go, Estwing. So I'll have this link down in the description as well, but it is super cheap and I use it all of the time just to kind of persuade things around. Um, obviously I'm not framing out houses or anything like that. So when I think about hammers, I think about just a few things that help me just kind of push some stuff around. And these are the ones that I use the most, which is why they're right here. Everybody's gonna have different tools that they reach for in the shop. But I found that the ones that I most consistently reach for are the ones that are just kind of like cheap and easy beater tools. And since the wood shop is way more geared towards CNC woodworking now than it even was a year ago, I found that the majority of the things that I really need all can live in this toolbox. You can see that other toolbox behind me and I surely have filled it with a ton of things. But the truth is I don't use it nearly as much as this one. Some more things that I would love to add to it is a place where I can put my sand. I just have normal DeWalt sanders, nothing super fancy, and I've got a ton of sandpaper. I'd like to implement that a little bit more in here, but I don't want to use that empty drawer for that. I'd much rather use that for bits. So if anybody has any good solutions for being able to put some sander stuff on this, I'd love to hear it because the back is completely open and this normally does not live against a wall. So it's definitely fair game. So if I end up do finding out a very really good solution for that, I'll show off that briefly during the bits video because I am so excited about the shaper tray showing up. I'm not sponsored by them at all. I spent my money on the Kickstarter, but it is a very cool tool. So if you do any type of digital fabrication in your shop and you're looking to dimensionally get exactly the outline of what you're looking for so that you can put that into your laser CNC machine, it is the way to go. I'm going to be giving away a Onefinity CNC machine on my channel, a laser from Thunder Laser, and a ton of other awesome stuff that you can check out down in the description below. That live drawing is going to be done on my channel on October 1st at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you want to know more about that, you can check out the description where I will have a video kind of outlining what Make Timber is 
is because this is a Make Timber video and I'm excited that y'all are here. And I'm also very thankful for all of my Patreon members for consistently showing up. Uh, there are 30 of y'all now, which is absolutely mind blowing to me. Whenever I opened up my Patreon, I was pretty hesitant to do so because there's so many things to consider and I am just so thankful that y'all are showing up and supporting me. It really means a ton. If you're brand new to the channel and you're confused about what all these numbers are on the screen, uh, right there, that is how long it took me to film and edit this video in particular to be able to put it out on YouTube because at the very end of the year, I'm going to add up all of my videos and the number of hours that it took to make them and then put that against Google AdSense to see my hourly rate for the channel. So that video will be coming out in January of 2024 if you're interested in the finances behind my YouTube channel. I'll be talking about all of the money stuff behind YouTube. And if you're looking to further support the channel, you can buy my files off of cnclater.com or join my Patreon. Those are two wonderful ways to do so. I really appreciate y'all showing up and I will see and see y'all later.